was mic'd up today as well by AWMP Civil and we are underway here, Picton kicking off and they'll run from left to right on your radio dial. Oh, and it's a terrible start for them here. Oh, you can't believe it, Thelmill Roosters in simply trying to pick up the ball from the kickoff. They've dropped it 10 metres out from their own line and there's going to be all sorts of problems now to start this match for the Roosters. Picton Magpies in prime field position, 10 metres out, a scrum will pack. That's not the way you want to start any match, let alone a grand final here. And we'll see what Picton can come up with on their first foray into the half here of Thermila. As you can hear in our referee's audio mic, that ball is now out. Oh, and it's picked up and slammed there. Now, number three for Picton, Till was smashed onto his back out of dummy half. They look to come to the left-hand side of the field, just to the slight, about five metres to the left of the post. And it's a slow play, the ball now. Tackle two. They have a little dummy toward the left, and the hook will run it himself. That's Bell. He couldn't find the gap, though. Three metres away from the Thelmia line. And they'll play it, come out to the back here to their halfback, go to the right-hand side here, does a dummy. Could have been an obstruction. Instruction. Referee rules so as you can hear there. Beautiful stuff with AWMP Civil giving us all that action there from the referee's mic. Not a great start from either side here. It was of course Thelmia dropping the ball 10 metres out from the kickoff. But then straight away the Magpies have thrown away an attacking opportunity there with an obstruction. And now Thelmia will be given a little chance to get off the hook here. The Roosters finding touch now from the penalty around about 25 metres out from their own line and we've just seemed to have lost the ball as we f see a big chook on the sideline here. How about that? The rooster cock a doodle doo. He'll be hoping that he can crow later this afternoon if Thelmy happen to get up. Of course Thelmy in three grades this afternoon. Here they come away now with the number three. That's Simpson. He takes it up around about 32 metres out from his own line. That's a good solid hit up there from the number 12. That's Shipley. He's caught just over the 40 metre line. It's a very slow play of the ball. Lucky not to give away a penalty. Comes away centre field. It's now with a lock. Goggins. Goggins works it up over the halfway line. Tackle three. It's good field position here for the Roosters at the moment. Their hooker waits. He finds it out the back here. The prop. And now they link up with their halfback there. That's Rockwell. Rockwell goes to the right. Still got hands here. But his face emerges on the right hand shot. Can they get away from him? And Simpson around the corner. He tries to offload it, but he's dropped the ball. That'll be picked up by the Picton Magpies. He's put into touch. So I think you'll see a scrum is formed here. Exciting stuff to start this one from both sides. However, plenty of errors in the midst of all of it. And the score still here is after around about three minutes of play between the two sides and thank you very much to John Stoneham and co lawyers out there at Queen Street Campbelltown 15 minute obligation free three minutes on the clock Neil all between the Picton Magpies and the Phil Mill Roosters here comes Picton feeding the scrum now now win that nice and simply simply chuck it away to the right hand side here and work at centre of the field now around about 15 metres from their own line on tackle one there comes the big lock four there, Johnston with that shaggy hair. Bit of an Ethan Low look going on there for the Cowboys. He gets it up around 25 metres out from his own line. Bell away, geez, that's a strong tackle there on the number 11, McKenzie. He was smashed by two defenders from Thelmere. Here's Bell. Bell looks to find that big man in the headgear there. That's Whitehouse in the black headgear. Number 10 for Picton. And they're around about 35 metres out from their own line, centre of the field. There's a call up in arms here. They're going to kick early in the count for that matter. It's not a bad kick either. There's some chases coming through, but he loses his footing. Ball is there for everybody, but Thelmere will end up with it. 42 metres out from their own line. So in the end, kicking early, probably not the best option here for the Magpies. They've given away some field position. Thelmere will run it away, and it's a three-man tackle that's met there. Whitehouse, one of the tacklers, puts him on his back. Slow play the ball too. Now wait a dummy half. It's Kilmeister. He gives it away now to the number 11. That's Nan. And Nan is caught around about 52 metres away from his own line, just inside Picton's territory. And they work it away to the left-hand side of the field, but mostly staying in this central sort of channel here, both sides. Yet to see a great deal of expansive football. Thermal did try it in the last set. And they work it away once again here. Left-hand side to Shipley. Shipley got in between two of them. That'll now be the last tackle. 28 metres out from the line here. You can hear that wind picking up in the referee's mic. And that is far too deep, despite the wind trying to hold it up. You'd have to have a hurricane if you wanted to pull that up. Someone call America and get them to give that wind over here. That is not going to do whatsoever here, unfortunately, though, for Thelmere. That is far too big. We'll see a 20-metre restart for the Picton Magpies. Neither side able at the moment to find a conclusive end to their set here.
It'll be picked in. They'll work it away. It's tapped by the number 11 there. That's McKenzie. He finds a support runner with Whitehouse, and Whitehouse works it up to around about 25 metres out from his own line. Centre of the field, very slow play. The ball hands on it too, so they're lucky not to be penalised. There's Johnston, the big lock forward. He's made a couple of good runs to start this match now. 35 metres out, centre of the field. Bell looks to one. He ends up finding it to the first man there, the receiver, and that is McKenzie. McKenzie works it up 45 metres out from his own line. Tackle three here. The referee making sure that all the Thurmill players are back on side. And there's Goggins again. In fact, it's Johnston with the ball. Jeez, he's had a good start to this match. Four big hit-ups already, and he's picked up plenty of metres each time. They'll go out to the back to their halfback here. Here's Payne, who puts it up in the air and tries to give Thurmill a bit of pain with a bomb. But it'll land short, and that's a good take at the end there from Hannigan Brown. And he works it up. Around about 10 metres out from his own line, right-hand side of the field. Put it back toward the middle now. And that's a good shot put on the Thurmill player onto his back. And he's really struggling now playing that ball. That's not a good sign at all there for Thurmill. But they'll work it away now. Tackle three. And he's broken out of a few tacklers there. Not quite sure who that is. I think it's the centre there, Simpson. Simpson works it away. And now it's tackle number four. Away to their lock forward here. Goggins, who's had a bit of work. Both lock forwards so far for these sides. Getting through plenty of metres in the opening exchanges here. They'll go out the back now to their halfback. That's Rockwell who tried to get on the outside there and find Shipley. But Shipley was caught in a good legs tackle. Rockwell down the left-hand side again. They're going to put it through the hands. Now there's a bit of space here. Simpson decides he'll have to kick it in the end. Oh, unlucky. He nearly caught that in the end goal, but he jumped from the field to play, so correctly ruled from the referee. And that'll be tackle one for the Picton Magpies. Five metres out from their own line there. Now try and work it away once again here, Picton. Thelmere winning the early exchanges in terms of field position. Tackle two, 10 metres out. Bell comes to the right-hand side for his players. And on tackle three, they're caught around about 18 metres out. 10 metres in from the right-hand touchline. Bell does a dummy and takes them on himself, but that's a good tackle there from Rockwell. Who smothered him up the halfback. 25 away. Geez, that's a lazy bit of play out of dummy half. And Goggins did well to actually pick it up. And geez, he just keeps carrying them there. That's a great run there. In fact, it's Johnston. Johnston the lock forward for Picton. But after that, they said that he's actually knocked it on. All that good work undone there from Ryan Johnston. He's had a great start to this match. Five big hit-ups already. Despite us only having three sets from Picton. But on that occasion, he fumbled it and trying to get back to his feet. And now Thurmill will once again be given a bit of an opportunity to, to attack. They've been let off the hook when Picton were down in their territory. And now this time, Picton have spilled their lollies. And the referee saying that we've got to pack that scrum once again. When you're ready. As Rockwell puts yeah. it in, they win the scrum. Goggins comes away, centre of the field. Good shot there on the fullback. Hannigan Brown was smashed. That was big White House that put him to ground. Now work it away, Kilmeister. Found Goggins Move, yeah. at the centre of the field Run, there, no, no, right through that middle channel, no, and the referee saying milking there. He doesn't want to see a penalty blown just yet. Here's Nan. Nan works it to the left hand yeah. side, and they are short here. Yeah. Picton. Yeah, if they keep three. attacking this channel, they will do so. Kilmeister gets a laid off float away. Finds Shipley, but Shipley Move, couldn't link up with Simpson. That'll be tackle four. Go, what go. can they do in these last two plays? Kilmeister down the short side. Simpson is there, and he finds a way to get over the line. Well, they kept attacking that channel there on the left hand side. They were short for numbers picked in, and in the end, they were picked off. Mike Sheen joins me for expert analysis. Great try there from the Roosters down the left-hand side. Richie Kilmister causing all sorts of havoc for the Picton right-side defence. And on the John Stoneman Co. Lawyers scoreboard, eight and a half minutes gone in the first half. Thilmy leads this under-18 grand final, four points to nil with a kick to come. But they worked it upfield down that left-hand side. Good run from Bailey Nan. Then uh, found Goggins, and, and the Roosters are in on the left-hand side. And they're out 4-0, nil, nearly nine minutes gone. Good to see as well, Thurmiel, given their first real opportunity to, to launch an attack, Mike, and they certainly capitalised on it. They definitely did. It's, be, it's going to be a very even match, this under-18s game. Uh, for those who have seen the competition, a very even competition. And these two teams, nothing in it. They know each other intimately. Uh, many of them would be at high school together, so they would be uh, acutely aware of what the opposition's got in store. And... Uh, to see a, 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 an opening 10 minutes like this is absolutely no surprise as Jake Simpson tries to add the extras. Yeah, just inside here from the left-hand touchline, around about five metres in. As once again, we've mentioned it before, as there's been a lot of wind today out here at Campbelltown Sports Stadium. And that's the second time now that Simpson has tried to line up this kick, but has had to replace the ball because the wind has happened to push it off the tee. We'll see if he can get away with it this time. He's just wiping his feet here, as any good chook should do. And... 
Just about to position himself. Five metres in from the left touch line. He's got himself a huge run up here. An interesting sort of stance too. Strikes it horribly though. That's well wide. At about 10 metres to the right hand side of the uprights. Not even reaching the goal line, unfortunately, on that occasion there. But it's a good start nonetheless for the Phil Mill Roosters. And that is a big thank you to John Stonham and co lawyers. Queen Street, Campbelltown, 15 minutes obligation free. The scoreboard with 25 minutes to play in the first half. It's the Magpies trailing the Roosters. Four points to Neil, Mike Sheen. And the Magpies will uh, certainly not be disheartened by that opening 10 minutes. They've had several good opportunities. Uh, not the best kick from, uh, from uh, second best Daniel Payne uh, earlier in the in the play but uh, they'll be looking to bounce back here the Magpies picked in don't know when they're beaten and they will well and truly be in this match for the full 70 minutes as we see the Roosters off the long run that looks like uh, big Bryce Ritchie Mans over the quarter unfortunately this time Thelmere have managed to secure possession from the kickoff last time it resulted in an opportunity for Picton and that's a good tackle there from Bell and I think you'll find that's also Ricketts over the top absolutely smashing that man to ground there's a little winger there for Thelmere that's Muscat who was tackled and now it's tackled two up the centre of the field around about 35 metres away Away from their own line here, no, film here. No, Looking to go back to back with points. Can they pile on the points for that matter? They'll come to the right hand side, linking up with their fullback Hannigan Brown, and he nearly yeah, opened up yeah. some space. Up Just back, caught yeah. inside that right hand yeah. touch line. Was very yeah. much flirting with danger there. Now bring him back to the middle of the field. It's a big left foot step here from that man in the middle. That's Goggins, and Goggins is put to ground. That's the last tackle, and in fact, he's going to rule that he's lost it. No good result there, and he's blown up Deluxe here too, Goggins. You don't want to see that. Very fiery at the referee, and we'll just see if we can get some audio from the ref himself there. Nothing coming through, so he's not too phased by Goggins. Little high rate there, Mike. Yeah, I, I just think uh, he, he wasn't too impressed with the error that he made. The referee ruling a, a lost ball. I think he was trying to appeal for a strip, but uh, not getting the whistle his way. Picked him with a scrum feed. 20 in from touch on the east side, the Pembroke Road side of Campbelltown Stadium, right on halfway. Certainly didn't look like there were hands in there as the hands for the scrum happen now. Picked him win the ball. And again, it's that man Johnston that works at four. Geez, he's been good to start this match. We're only about 12 minutes into it, but he's had six hit-ups already and made great metres each time. There's Bell away to his big man there, and he's actually smashed on his back once again. Ricketts. Ricketts, very, very unlucky not to try and break through the line on that occasion they work it away once again here's the number 11 for them now Mackenzie up that left hand channel and we'll just see where they can go on this occasion here Bell waiting at dummy half he finds Johnston Johnston once again working hard here let's tackle four Around about five metres to the right-hand side of the uprights. 20 metres out. They'll go at the back here. That's Whitehouse. And Whitehouse finds Payne. Payne out the back now to their fullback. There's a little bit of space there for Foster. And he nearly went all the way to Tung Curry. Put it that way. Here comes Payne. He'll go down the left-hand side. Can they put in a little grubber? That could have been accidental offside. Referee will rule exactly that. Let's just have a little listen to the audio here. And that's exactly what he rules. In fact, he's going to say the actual defensive line itself was offside there, I think, Mike. Yeah, I think the uh, the, the player that played at the ball was onside, but uh, referee Cavallaro finding the Roosters inside the 10. The Magpies deep in attack here. And he's picked in, getting us back underway now. And it's there for Get Thistleton. In fact, yes, Keegan Thistleton, just short of the line there, about a metre away. Bell decides to go for a scoot. Can he get the ball down? Referee thinks he sees it on the ground. Waiting for his decision. And he still doesn't want it. There we go. So official there. Bell managing to sneak under there. Reuben Bell puts the Picton Magpies on the board here for the John Stoneham and Co. Lawyers scoreboard. Queen Street, Campbelltown, 15 minutes, obligation free. The score now reads after, in fact, we have 21 and a half minutes remaining in this first half here. Magpies for Roosters for kick to come for Picton. As I'm now joined by Mike Dunny Dunn. Hey, good afternoon. I've uh, just been down in the uh, dressing room, sung the song with the uh, Highlanders. Uh, not sure what I was singing, but it was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> then ducked into the Oran Park shed, so I can confirm Kieran Stevens uh, has a dislocated shoulder and he's um, on his way to the hospital to uh, get that looked at. Um, and just talking to some of the boys from Oran Park, they weren't too disappointed in their loss. They were happy they made the grand final. But um, yeah, good to see young Reuben Bill score the opening try here for the Magpies. Of course, Mike Dunny Dunn is brought to you by MacArthur Installation. And, of course, you have to check out there with Dennis Hellier for all your renovation needs as Payne lines up this kick. And he's struck it beautifully right over the black dot. Picked and Magpies will lead six points to four. Yeah, number two player in the uh, Payne family behind Jack. That means uh, Robbie's number three. Uh, yeah, good conversion there in these uh, windy conditions. 
Stay on, guys. Daniel Payne making no mistake with that one. So now we do have a new leader in this contest as we approach 20 minutes remaining in the first half. 15 minutes gone here. The Picton Magpies leading the Thelmere Roosters. Six points to four as Thelmere get us back underway here. And that ball trickles down despite the wind. And they'll look to link up here with the big prop forward. That is James Porter who works it up around about 15 metres out from Picton's line. And they're going to say go back and play it on the mark there. No penalty forthcoming. Yeah, a lot of first grade experience from uh, young Porter this year. Been very impressive to start this match here in the opening 15 minutes. Plenty of hit ups. Him and Johnston doing lots of work for the Picton Magpies. Bell waits a dummy no, half here on tackle no. two, and again it's Big Porter that looks to get back into it. And it did look flat. In fact, the referee, as you can hear there, coming through the referee's mic thanks to AWMP Civil. Forward pass, Mike. Yeah, not sure what um, what kind of haircut there. Um Bailey knowing your business has got, but um, <laughs> it's it's pretty good for uh, grand final day. So uh, Bailey Bailey Nan, um, vice president of Narnia Business. Do you think he's uh, going for one of those aerodynamic looks? He's got the yeah, sort of the, shaved head with a bit of a the, what do you call the, it? Not a mullet, but a uh, well, it's a Mr. T haircut. Mr. T, I like that. And I pity the fool that doesn't want to get on board with that haircut. That could have been an obstruction just there. And in fact, it is ruled exactly that against Hannigan Brown. Not a great start straight after receiving possession there, Thelma Roosters. They've coughed it up and picked and really let off the hook on that occasion, Dunny. Yeah, I thought um, I thought that should have been play on. I thought the um, Thelma player was through the line. But um, they do that, do that a lot, the uh, Thelma side. They do run a lot of people through the line. And um, I have said earlier in the year, uh, especially when we played them, that... Um, they need to push through the line and uh, not stop. So probably a good call by the referee. Here is Bell tapping in on the ground and getting us back underway. Five metres short of Picton's halfway line. And that's another good run there from James Porter, who's been in everything to start this match. He gets about 10 metres in that one. He's not very happy about the extra attention in the play, the ball itself. Bell works it away back to the centre of the field, and it's one of the little wingers that's come in for a pick-up. In fact, that's McKenzie there, the second rower. No, 5'8", Andrews it is. Now work it away to the left-hand side here. The number four gets away from the Matara. Harrison Scott, he nearly finds some um, space there on that left-hand channel. They work it back to the middle of the field. Here's Andrews. Andrews nearly gets away from them, and he's put to ground by two of them. That should be tackle number four. Bell waits at dummy half, 20 metres out, just to the centre of the field here. They work it through Goggins. In fact, Johnston, now that comes away here to Ricketts. And Ricketts keeps pushing forward 15 metres short of the Thelmeal Roosters goal line. That'll be the last tackle. They'll come to the right-hand side. Poor pass, but Payne has excellent hands to pick it up. However, the kick isn't quite as good, Dunny. No, a terrible kick there by number two in the uh, Payne family. Um, probably needs to learn a bit more off his uh, old brother Jack uh, on how to kick. I wouldn't uh, learn too much off his old man. <laughs> his old man being a front rower. Um, yeah, front rowers shouldn't kick. We saw a lot of kicking in the previous match for front rowers, of course, in game number one for today's grand final here, Group 6 Rugby League. This is game number two, the under-18s, Thelmere Roosters taking on the Picton Magpies. Thelmere are currently with the ball here, and they'll receive a penalty to Picton. Quite simply, they're far too ill-disciplined to start this match, Mike Dunny Dunn. Yeah, um, good hit up there from um, Thelmere from um, Mitch Miles. Um, but, yeah, discipline... Uh, is number one. You get, keep giving away silly penalties, you're inviting teams back in uh, to the game. And very interesting here, they're deciding not Get to kick for touch with that strong win still Get hanging around the ground here. Far, not Go anywhere near as strong as it was in the first match of today. Of course, this is game number two here of the Group 6. Yeah, good league. run there from uh, Goggins. He yeah, makes yeah. Uh, 15 metres. Absolutely. Um, I actually went down there and, um, as, as we see, Nan. And yet, hands all penalty. over the ball there. Supporter ended up with it, but they said that it was straw. Uh, strip, sorry, not strolled at all. I'm drooling after that call, of course. But, uh, yeah, not a great piece of play there from Porter. There was hands all over the ball. Two other tacklers on the man himself. So, Thurmia will once again get an advanced position here. 30 metres out, they tap the ball, and they go on the charge here with their number 10. That's Miles pushing up around about 20 metres out from Picton's line here. Players all over him, Payne, lucky not to concede a penalty. Now they've got a fresh man on the field as well. That's number 17, Bay Bay has come onto the field. He works into the middle now. 10 metres out, just to the left-hand side of the uprights. Kilmeister away to their halfback. He's dropped it, Rockwell. And, geez, I'll tell you what, I thought initially that went back and then bounced full, but the referee has decided that is a knock-on, Dunny. Yeah, well, good call there by, um, by the match officials. Um, as I said uh, in the last game, the match officials have done exceptionally well through this uh, final series. And the good thing is, um, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about rugby league and we haven't been talking about match officials. So, yeah, good call by the match officials. Picton just need to um, hang on to the ball. I can tell you that wind 
um, is pretty strong. I, I went down. Um, that's why I missed the first 10 minutes of this half and uh, lost my hat. Um, had to chase it uh, downfield. <laughs> um, it is it is pretty strong, and from a points per uh, point of view, um, it's probably a ten point win. So Thilmere would need to be leading uh, by ten um, going into half time. And they might have an opportunity to do so here as well because Picton have once again invited them a chance to get some points on the board here. That was a silly knock-on, really. It wasn't much doing. Should have just really tried to tuck it under your arm and take the tackle there in their own dangerous sort of area. So 30 metres out is where they'll pack the scrum. If Thelmere can win this one, which they should, and we could be seeing some more points on the board. A couple of new players coming onto the field, of course, here for Thelmere. The number 16 is also on. That's O'Neill. That big shaggy locks there. Yeah, and that looks like right uh, Richie Meads about to come on there. Um, Richie Meads, uh, a few games in first grade this year as well. A couple of big boppers there. He's a very, very strong looking prop forward, Richie Manns. As they work at centre of the field here with Hannigan Brown, and now it's played. Kilmeister gave it away there to the number 13, that's Goggins. He comes that interchange now, so Richie Manns is about to hop on the field. Kilmeister goes to the right hand side to that freshman on the field as well, that's Bebe. He's a big boy, geez, that could have been a very, very dangerous tackle there. Thought they lifted him over the horizontal. They'll keep playing on here. Comes away to Rockwell. Rockwell out the back, Hannigan Brown. Oh, how's that? Eat some palm, why don't you? Greg English style there, strike in the face, might have broken his jaw, it was that strong. Here's Kilmeister, getting it away now for Thurmill Roosters. That's a strong charge, three metres out, last tackle. Referee raises his arm in the air. Kilmeister puts it back to the middle of the field. Rockwell tries to get a kick away, but he's put under pressure. I thought that was touched by Picton, that might be a knock on. That's exactly what they're going to rule, are they? No, they're going to say changeover. Yeah, I think he got that call wrong. I thought that, um, pretty sure that was a knock on from um, Young Paney there. Um, so uh, picked and get a, 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 a lucky call. And of course, let's have a bit of a score update here. The Picton Magpies leading six points to four over the Thurmill Roosters. 13 minutes left to play in this one, thanks to John Stoneham and Co. Lawyers. Queen Street, Campbelltown, 15 minutes, obligation free. As Picton working away from their own line here. Caught around about 20 metres out from their own line. That's the number three there for them. Till he plays the ball. They'll keep going down this short side, living very dangerously. Good little offload, though. And once again, they get it away here. That's Johnston who works it back to the centre of the field, the lock forward. And when I say centre of the field, I mean at least it's away from the sideline because they're still close to this right-hand channel. Now it comes away to Payne. Payne links up there with McKenzie. He nearly got through. Brendan McKenzie around about 45 metres out from his own line. They've got a new hooker on the field, too, as well. Bell has gone off, and in his place has come Bowell. And they'll put the kick down field here, Hannigan Brown watching it, oh he's got hands to that, that'll be a knock on, Hannigan Brown just lost the focus there and he's also lost his team a chance to get out of their own danger end Mike. Yeah he just had a bit of a look um, and uh, yeah just dropped the pill cold there, not sure what he was thinking. On that occasion you simply just got to get both hands on the ball and make sure that you get out of that danger area. Yeah, the, That's um, just not good from Hannigan Brown. Yeah, crowd's starting to build up. I see uh, Norellan uh, have taken up position on the, uh, on the Southern Hill. Of course, the iconic hill for all those rugby league live games that we've always seen positioned so beautifully when you turn on that PlayStation. Here they come away now, picked in around about 10 metres out from Thurmere's lines. A couple of new players coming onto the field now. Payne links up there with Till, and he nearly got through the centre. Now, waiting here at dummy half, it was a slow play the ball. Bowell got it away, and that's a good tackle there. Good, strong defence on Ricketts. He couldn't bust through the line. Yeah, that looks like uh, Ryan Clark in the uh, 20. Clark onto the field now. Payne tries to navigate away through the defensive line. Strong left foot step. And he tried to straighten up with the right Mitchell Pierce style. And geez, that's a very slow play. The ball could have been penalised, but the referee says milking. Now he's going to say, though, that yes, there was in fact a bit too long there. So, yeah, great call from the ref, but correct one you'd have to say, Dunny. Yeah, I know it um, used to be uh, dairy country, but uh, we, we don't have milking anymore. <laughs> um, I don't like the term. It's, um, yeah, it's applied in our a blight in our game and I hate it when the referees say it. Yeah, it just reminds me just reminds me of food. Um, milking, cow, steak. Um, you know, just down that line. Well, we've got some wonderful sandwiches next door, Danny, so I don't know how much I can help you with the milk no, itself, no, no. though. It's got to be... A um, bit of chicken and tuna? No, 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 definitely not. It's got to be uh, steak, steak or... Um, or steak. Steak. <laughs> yeah, I'm a meat-a-tarian. 
Peter Terry. Yes, yeah, and he's eight. Foster here. He's uh, looking for a big eight. meet prior to get a four-pointer for the Picton Magpies. They'll come to the left-hand side. Freshman on the field, the number 14. That's Clark. He did a long spiral and cut out pass to the winger out there. I think that's Ivanov. And he's caught just inside the left-hand touchline here. Picton in a bit of a bunch at the moment. You could pick him up for that matter. And they'll go back through the middle channel there. Last tackle. 10 metres in for the left-hand touchline. It comes away now to Payne. Payne looking to put another grubber in here. Oh, it's done well, has he? No, they're going to say a little hand in there. I think the referee's got that 100% spot on, Dunny. Yeah, that's probably... Um, I'm not 100% convinced that that was a knock-on from Felmy, but um, they're not blowing up too much. But um, that's uh, three good calls that Picton's got in the last um, five minutes. And of course, it does mean that they have once again another opportunity to put points on the board here. They're presently leading six Walk points in. to four thanks to John Stonham and Co. Lawyers on yeah. that scoreboard. Just under 10 minutes left to go in this first half. Here's Foster, put the foot down, and a big right foot for that matter to get around them. Then he pinned the ears back, and he scores down there in the left hand corner of Campbellstown Stadium. Dunny, what about that? He just pinged the ears back, and he went for it. Yeah, he's pretty quick, young Foster. Um, just throw me. Um, couldn't match the, the direction that um, Foster went there and a uh, pretty easy try to make boys and they lead 10-4 uh, from the Carver Associates. No real overlap whatsoever either. It was just a case of too much speed and of course you can't substitute pace in rugby league. It's probably the number one sort of attribute that any player is looking for, don't you? Yeah, you can't, you can't teach it either. So I um, had quite a few um, people that uh, can't play rugby league because they can run. Um, they've turned into good rugby league players like Josh Adokar. He's probably a good example of that. He's, he's one of the quickest in the game. Um, and I can tell you when he first started, uh, he couldn't tackle. But um, he can certainly play now, play Absolutely. for uh, Melbourne Storm, one game off a grand final. And of course he's had a great season this year. As has Vinavalu, there are other two wingers and those are probably two great examples there of players just with natural pace that have sort of converted to the game. Yeah, Vinavalu, um, he, he's something special. Um, I just really hope that he doesn't uh, follow the semi-trailer of the rugby union and um, the NRL can um, see some sense in keeping Vinavalu because um, he puts bums on seats. And unfortunately Daniel Payne unable to make that conversion there so his bum will be a little upset about that one speaking of bum on his seats. Won't be too happy that he's missed that one. The first kick was a good in itself. Eight minutes to go here on the first half. Thanks to John Stonham and co-lawyers. Queen Street, Campbelltown, 15 minutes, obligation free. And of course, Dunny's expert comments today are from MacArthur Installation. Big thank yous to them. And the rest audio that you're hearing, AWPM Civil. As Thelmia look to get us back underway here. It's the number two for them that does so. That's Earnshaw bringing it down. Oh, jeez, it was just very close to a drop there. But good hands in the end from Payne. He works it away. Oh, what a barnstorming run from the freshman on the field. He'll keep going. Oh, and he's bashed off another one. Hannigan Brown, eat tough, son. You've got to cop that. It's a 50-metre run there from Lachlan Whitehouse. What about that for a hit up, Dunny? You'd love that, mate. Yeah, that's um, pretty good for a front rower, 60 metres. Um, they can never run 100, but... Jeez, I would have loved to have seen him streak away once again because he trampled Hannigan Brown and I just can't picture what it would have been like. It would have been like a deer in headlights in front of a semi-truck there trying to stop big White House. Hannigan Brown put his body on the line and slowed him down enough, but all he was was a speed hump in the end and Phil Mill Roosters will give away another penalty. So chances here for Picton to go back to back. What a great run from White House though. They're deciding whether they're going to take the two, kick for touch or tap it. I think you'll find they're about to tap it here, Dunny. Yeah, they, they should tap it. They're only in front by uh, six. And they do exactly that and they'll work it away here. That's Dunk who's fresh on the field as well. A couple of big boppers coming on here. 15 metres away from Thurmill's line. They're on this right-hand channel. Payne hasn't got many options out here. But he decides to take it himself. That's brilliant from Daniel Payne. He only had the one man there and somehow he still managed to fool the defence. A big dummy to his wing partner there. It was Thistleton that he showed and go to, and he sliced straight through the fence like a hot knife through butter. Dunny, it doesn't get much better than that from a halfback. No, um, pretty good there. Uh, obviously, he learned off um, his brother Jack, not off his old man. Um, but yeah, he just stood up the centre there and uh, Jake Simpson quite easily uh, just ran around him and uh, scored. Great play um, for the young Payne. I've already seen him be pretty good with a boot today. A couple of nice scrubbers. Good wide out conversion for the first try. And he'll have another attempt here for his own try this time, just inside the right hand touchline. And you mentioned, of course, that Payne family has got a lot of talent in it. How do you see Daniel's career progressing? Yeah, um, he's a good young kid. He's only uh, 17, so he should uh, 
should play SG Ball next year. Not sure for who, but um, uh, should play SG Ball. If he doesn't play SG Ball, I'm sure he'll be in the um, CRL Redbacks uh, under 18 side. And um, yeah, I've known young, young Daniel a uh, long time. Um, had him in the under 13s development squads, and um, he's just uh, moved on since then. He's got better and better. 30 metres inside this right hand touchline here. The win picking up once again, so he's going to have to aim this quite a fair bit out to the right hand side of the right yeah, hand line. I think he might have to aim it uh, at the train station and the wind will bring it around. And here he goes, he does aim exactly there. Look at the wind bring it around, that's unbelievable. What a just fall short. That was nearly shades of Hazamel Masri against the Knights all those years ago. He just Daniel didn't Payne, have his, so uh, close. Didn't have his wheat fix. Um, unfortunately, they just fell a little bit short, but it had the curve on it, uh, a bit like Mike's driver. Um, just sideways. <laughs> a bit also like my own drive, unfortunately, Dunny. And there again, once we see the wind pushing that ball off the tee there. And I'll tell you what, you mentioned Weebix. Surely you should have taken a leaf out of your book on a steak for that one. It needs the extra protein. Yeah, but sometimes you just got to have um, 32 Weebix for breakfast. And at the moment, we might have to have 32 restarts here with the ball because it just keeps falling off the tee. So finally, Tony Salerno called for it in the first game. There was a hand put on it. They're deciding that they're going to take the fingers away now. They don't want any broken fingers when they're trying to play rugby league. So finally, we get back underway here. Just over four minutes left in this first half in the under-18s grand final here. Group 6 rugby league grand final day. It's a glorious day despite the win. Beautiful conditions otherwise. And, of course, the score is presently picked in Magpies 14. Phil Mill Roosters, four points. Just under four minutes to go here on the John Stoneham and Co. Lawyers scoreboard as Picton work it away from their own line. This time, however, we're not seeing Whitehouse with a charging, buckling run. But we will see Picton once again receive a penalty. Film here in this last 10 minutes, Dunny, have just been completely ill-disciplined. Yeah, they have been. They're um, just giving away way too many penalties. Um, and you can't afford to do that um, against Picton and you can't afford to do it in grand finals. And of course, with that strong win, they're deciding just to tap it because they were centre of the field around about 30 metres out from their own line, not wanting to put extra pressure on themselves as Dunk works it up over the 40 metre line, kicking those legs and flailing them, trying to get up and play that ball quickly. Works it away now to Andrews and he's just short of the halfway line. Here is a dummy half, that's Bowell. He gives it away now. And once again, it's that man who's fresh on the field, Dunk. Plenty of work in this set for him. And they've got Whitehouse, who's acting as a blocker here, running through the line. Payne will put up the bomb. Jeez, look at the curve on that. It's got about 30 metres from the opposite direction of where he placed it. There could be pressure on the winger here for Filmier as well. And a man racing through. And you can just hear the wind in that referee's audio there. So we'll turn that down just a little bit for you because, wow, it's really picking up there once again. And look at those uprights as well, Dunny. They're swaving back and forth. Yeah, I'm more worried about the light pole. Uh, to my right here, um, Ooh, yeah. it's, it's swinging a good metre uh, either way. So, um, yeah, pretty windy here at Campbelltown Stadium. So if you are going to head down here uh, later on tonight, make sure you bring a blanket. But uh, just remember, it's 23 degrees uh, all day where, where we are um, upstairs here today. And certainly don't bring an umbrella. That will go outside very, very quickly inside well, out. Well, unless you want to go back to uh, Filmy or Picton really, really <laughs> quick. Um, yeah, very proper style. And of course, we hope that uh, the future infrastructure for New South Wales is maybe a bit sturdier than that light pole there, because that could be a problem if anything happens here. But there's a problem now for Picton Magpies, because away goes, I think that's Shipley here for Thelmy. He nearly put a foot on the touch yeah. line. In fact, I say that he did. That's very well spotted from the touch judge there. Good stuff there, Danny, because it looked like for all money, Shipley was away. Yeah, he was away, but um, yeah, great, great job there and great positioning from uh, touch judge uh, Mick Tinelli there, right on the spot. And 100% um, correct um, as Shipley put his foot on the line. And so he flirted great, with great the touch call. line on a number of little foot downs as well, about three or four times there. One of them, though, he certainly did put a foot on the line. It was picked up, as you correctly pointed out there, of course. Dunny's comments today are thanks to MacArthur Installation. And, of course, you can head there to Dennis Hollier for all your renovation needs. And that little update here for your scoreboard just as we approach the end of the first half. Minute and 15 remaining on that first half scoreboard there. Thanks to John Stoneham and co-lawyers. Queen Street, Campbelltown, 15 minutes obligation free is the Picton Magpies. Work it away from their own line now. Centre of the field. That comes out to the number 20 now. That's Dunk, and he's put on his back. 
and in fact putting his front there and his head is smooshed into the ground. Here comes Bowell, away to Payne. Payne finds that big man Whitehouse who wound up not too long ago and picked up 50 metres back from the kickoff. On this occasion though, they've stopped him quite nicely here, Thurmill, so he's not getting away. And all the line is set and that's a very sloppy play, the ball. So Thurmill will have one final opportunity in this first half, Dunny. Yeah, good decision by the referee there. Um, he tried to um, ask for a penalty there to pick the players by the um, not playing that ball properly, but uh, yeah, well spotted by the referee. Um, I'll tell you what, if you wanted to start a business in Picton, you could be a hairdresser. Um, a lot of these boys for the Picton Magpies could do with a good um, a good haircut. Bit of a sheer, I think. There's a lot of long hairstyles in there. There's also a long hairstyle that's just come on for Thurmia too. He's got the big man bun going on. Now work it away, but they'll say no. We have to refeed the scrum here once again. Five seconds on the clock. We might not even get another opportunity to do so. 3-2, they're trying to get in there quickly. Rockwell feeds it, just gets away with it. So they have one last attack here. Hannigan Brown puts a kick over the top. It's far too deep though, and there's no one really chasing it. Although there was nearly a mix up with the two Picton players. But now there's a bit of an opportunity if the winger can get away from his opposite number. And in the end, that'll be a tackle. And that should bring to an end here the first half between the Picton Magpies and the Thermal Roosters in the under-18s grand final. Group 6 Rugby League, and of course, if you want to get involved in today's matches, head across to both our Twitter and our Facebook pages. That Twitter page is none other than Mac underscore Sports Radio, and you can get us on that. And of course, the Facebook page, at GR6 League Live. So those are the two places to go if you want to get involved in the conversation. This one was run and won by Bundanoon. They, of course, defeated Oran Park. 36 points to 6 as Thilmia get us back underway for the second half here in the under-18s competition. Of course, that previous one I just mentioned was for the Sydney Highland Shield. Sorry, the Southern Highland Shield. And now Picton have got it around about 18 metres out from their own line. Bell tried to pick it up from dummy half and straight away gifting possession to Thilmia Roosters. That's what they need to try and get back into this one, Danny. Yeah, that's what uh, Thilmia would be happy with that. Um AJ Peters wouldn't be that happy with um, that start from Ruben Bell, but uh, I'm sure that he would have been happy with his team's performance in the first half. Um, AJ Peters um, unfortunately um, missed last week's final for um, in first grade with a shoulder injury, but uh, I'm sure he'll be back uh, next year. And O'Neill feeds the scrum, Goggins gets in and comes away to Rockwell. He links up with Hannigan Brown, who nearly got through them, then decided to throw a ball straight away on the first tackle, gifting possession back to Picton and once again letting them off the hook. On that occasion, you've just got to hold the ball and try and work some field position and get yourself back onto the scorer's list, Dunny. Yeah, I'll just keep my eye on how Harry Foster, he's just, uh, the Picton fullback, he's just limping a little bit in back place. I'll just keep my eye on him will be interesting because, of course, he's got a lot of pace too and he exploited Thurmiel Roosters in the first half by putting the foot down and just absolutely going for it. That's the number six there for Picton himself. Stephen Dengate works it away and he's caught around about five metres short of the halfway line. Bell out the back now, comes to the number 14. That's Clark. He decides to put up a big bomb. Hannigan Brown gets under and takes it very nicely. Stops, props, and then considers his options. Links up with his wing partner out there on the wide side. I think you'll find that's Earnshaw, and he's put to ground now. Now wait at dummy half. 15, in fact, 25 metres out from their own line. Pleading for a penalty with a referee, but that's not forthcoming. And now they'll work it over just to around about 35 metres out from their own line here on tackle number three. Lying in the play the ball, but no penalty forthcoming there. I think you'll find that was Porter who was on the ground and not clearing the ruck. Now work it away now. Kilmeister down this left-hand channel. Gogga nearly got through a gap there. It's a big 10 being marked out by the referee here. And they'll push it back to the middle of the field now. That's another freshman on for film here, I think you'll find. Just unable to see his number at the moment. Yeah, but here's like the last tackle. Richie Mann's back onto the field. Kilmeister gives it away to the halfback Rockwell. He puts in a kick that is halfway in between a chip, halfway in between a bomb, and realistically nothing doing at the end of that set there for Thilmia. They've got to have a stronger finish to their sets. The Roosters has picked and work it away. Now I'll give it here to the big prop forward. I think you'll find that's Porter who works it up just over the 30 metre line. They're certainly winning the field position to start this second half here. Bell brings away the number four, Harrison Scott. He's caught just short of the 40 metre line in a good two-man tackle, not going too far. Bell out of dummy half, decides to have a scoot, steps off the right foot and puts in a big left palm and the head goes rocking back as he's met with three defenders. And that could have been a penalty against Picton despite having the ball then because another man came in and denied another tackler a chance to get to Bell himself. And in the end, Bell has dropped it. That's his second error of the match so far, Mark Dunny Dunn. Yeah, I think I'm going to um, I'm going to get my glasses out of the out of my backpack because um, I didn't see him lose that ball. But um, 
the match officials did. So um, bear with me while I get my glasses on. Of course, I am wearing glasses. So if one of us has a better view at the moment, it's probably myself as Dunny has a bit of a rummage around in the backpack there to try and find those specs that will save him. So spec savers, there's a free plug for you. But here we go with O'Neill about to feed the scrum for the Thirlmill Roosters. He'll put the ball in now and they win that one. Goggins brings it away. Rockwell links up with Hannigan Brown who's been heavily involved for both good and bad today. 40 metres short of the Picton line here. Slow play the ball. No one clearing and rightfully penalised there, Dunny. No, I've got the glasses on and, um, yeah, no, it still, still makes no difference. <laughs> the updates, of course, today from Mark Dunny Dunn are brought to you by MacArthur Installation and you can speak to Dennis Hellier for all your renovation needs there as the Thirlmill Roosters go on the attack once again here. And I know we've talked about Milky and you can hear it there in the referee's audio thanks to AWMP Civil. We don't want to talk too much about it because it'll make Dunny very hungry here. He wants steaks, he wants milks, he wants just about anything you can give to him at the moment. They'll work it away, Thirlmill Roosters. It's with Rockwell. Now to O'Neill. Hannigan Brown links up and there's a bit of an opportunity here for the centre, the number four. That's Blomfield. He nearly got to the line but they'll push him back. Three men in there to stop him and he's kicky around savagely. It almost looked like David Clemmer there as he does that weird sort of doggy style thing that he does in the NRL itself. Just a metre short of the line here for Thirlmill Roosters. They'll work it away. O'Neill, there's short here. Oh, and all he had to do was hold the ball and fling it away to the left-hand side there. Is that Hannigan Brown once again? I think it is, Dunny. In fact, no, it's Rockwell who's dropped the dropped the ball there, spilt these lollies. Not good, though, for the Thirlmill Roosters. Yeah, someone call the tactical response group. Uh, Thirlmill has just absolutely bombed that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those late sort of burners there, Dunny. I like that, mate. Didn't pick up on that at first, but I like it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I like to throw those in every now and then because um, I know uh, Ray from Memory Makers, he'll be listening in while he's uh, videoing um, these games, and he'll, he'll have a little bit of a chuckle um, at some of my one-liners. So, um, uh, g'day, Ray uh, from Memory Makers. You do a good job. And of course, that one is probably for the memory banks too because that was a good one there from Danny. Of course, all his comments today are brought to you by MacArthur Installation. Speak to Dennis Hillier for all your renovation needs. And right now, I can't believe it, it's Reuben Bell once again trying to pick it up out of dummy half. Dunny puts on the specs. What do you call that one, Dunny? No, uh, another wrong decision. Um, yeah. another, another bad decision from the uh, match officials. Uh, don't think that was a knock on there. Right now, Ruben is wishing no one was ringing his bell because he's dropped it once again, unfortunately. And they'll feed the scrum here as Mike Sheen puts his <laughs> He's got, his uh, he's got he's butter fingers. He's had enough of our puns here, Dunny. Can you believe it? Yeah, he's got uh, butter fingers, the old Tinkerbilt. <laughs> they work it away with yeah, Bromfield. Bromfield. That looked like a bit of a late tackle there over the top from uh, the front row. Unnecessary Whitehouse. there from Whitehouse, despite that huge charge in the first half. Here's Nan working at centre field just in front of the uprights, yeah, 10 yeah, metres out. Very the distinctive on the Mr. T haircut. Kilmeister gets it away to Goggins. Goggins just short of the line now, three metres away. But they're pretty well set here in defence picked Yeah, in. they'll go to one of the front rowers here in uh, Morals or... Might try Richard a short Hint. barge over instead. The barge over comes from the dummy half himself, Kilmeister. Goggins now waits a dummy half, and they're going to say he's lost it. So at the moment, it's a drop -a -thon from our two hookers, both Bell and Kilmeister. They've been involved in all the drops to start this second half, Dunny. Yeah, I've got, um, I've got some of that uh, sticky spray in my car. I might have to go and get it and give it to both teams. Um, uh, they're spoiling a good game of footy here. Still 14-4, the Magpies over the Roosters for AWPM Civil. Um, I just think both teams just need to settle down. They're both uh, a little anxious and um, just trying to do a little bit too much with the ball. Absolutely. I mean, there's plenty of time to play. Nearly a half an hour left in this one. We've only had eight minutes of play in the second half. So on the John Stoneman Co. Lawyers, Queen Street, Campbell Sound, 15 minutes obligation free scoreboard. 27 and a half left in this second half. It's presently Picton Magpies leading the Thirlmill Roosters, 14 points to four. He worked for it. He got it. Porter picks up a penalty there. And there's a lot of applause coming from the Picton fans in the grandstands here. And it's a pretty good crowd too, Dunny. Yeah, it is um, a big crowd. Uh, I was just talking to someone before about um, how many seats are vacant downstairs um, and there's not too many uh, vacant seats downstairs and um, me and crowds, we got on really well. Um, the last home ground or home game for uh, West Tigers apparently, there was 9,500 people here. Um, I think that included 6,000 ghosts. 
<laughs> no goes today, fortunately, though. We do have a nice crowd building here. Of course, this is all the grand finals packed into one day. Group 6 Rugby League and six fitting grand finals, of course, for Group 6. This is number two here for you today. It's between the Picton Magpies and the Thirl Mill Roosters in the under-18s. As it's worked away here, Brendan McKenzie for the Picton Magpies. 30 metres out from the Roosters line. Porter gets it away now to Payne. Payne has options. He goes out the back to Foster. That should be play on. It was dropped backwards, and that's exactly what the referees rule. 40 metres out now, so they've lost about 10 metres from that drop from Foster. Payne decides to run out of dummy half and puts in a kick down to that back left-hand channel of the Roosters defence. Hannigan Brown picks it up. Can he get out of the in goal? Does well to get away from one. Fends away from a second. Can't get away from a third though. In fact, that's Payne who came to get him. And I think you'll find Payne's actually got a bit of a head knock here off the back of tackling him around the legs. And in the end, Hannigan Brown though, despite Payne being in a bit of pain himself, he has forced a knock on. Picked in, in a good position now, Dunny. Yeah, great, um, great chase there from uh, young P uh, Daniel Payne uh, to make that tackle and uh, force the error. And we'll see Picked in. Uh, on the attack, 10 metres out, still 14-4, 25 to go. And it's the first real opportunity they've had here in the second half, the Picton Magpies. Phil Miller have just been gifted field position all second half, but they haven't been able to come away with anything. And so often we see it in many, many levels of football that the team that has just had no opportunities, the first time they get one, they seem to put it on the board. Yeah, we'll see... Um See which way they're going to go here. They've got um, players lined out both sides. And Bell decides to go to the right-hand side of the field, and that's a scything run back toward the middle of the ground there from Till. Steve Bell style just kept cutting off the right foot. Porter's there looking for a hit-up. They'll go out the back instead to Clark. Clark links up to with the number four there. That's Harrison Scott, and Harrison Scott loses his footing, and he's caught 10 metres out, directly 10 metres in from the left-hand touchline. There's a bit of a scuffle there between Foster and one of the Thurmwell players, but we'll keep with the action here for you. It's now with the number 14 Clark who's doing a bit of ball playing and a hit up in, on this occasion. Bell waits a dummy half. Porter is there for a short one but Bell decides to try and dig underground like a mole but he's held up just short there. In fact they're going to say held up directly on the goal one so he'll go back out to the 10 metre line to play it. It's already worked for him once Dunny. He'll try to go for it once again. Yeah it's probably a blight in uh, Ruben's game that he tries to do that too much. Um, I think once or twice in a game is plenty um, for a hooker to scoot out of dummy half a couple of metres from the try line, not all the time. Well, here is Bell this time, and he doesn't go for a scoot. Instead, he gives it to Clark, who put a kick in there. I thought that was played out, but it won't matter because he's tried to offload it. In fact, it will matter because now Thurmio has dropped it. They're going to say play on. Bell decides to step off the left. They just stood and watched, and how often do you see that? A ball goes to ground. The defence stops, and Bell took advantage of it. He scores 10 metres in from the left touch line. A big left foot step to get in between two defenders. He plants it down for his second, and all of a sudden, it's 18 points to four with the kick to come, Mark Dunny done. Yeah, a little bit of afters there um, after the try was scored. Um, the uh, touch judge in there still trying to separate the players uh, along with the referee. I think they were just talking about uh, what hamburger joint they're going to go to tonight, <laughs> um, both teams. Um, as you know, um, a little bit of rivalry between these two teams. They've um, pretty much played in every grand final from uh, under nines uh, right through to on um, their 18s. Of course, they're only um, separated by a few kilometres as well, just adding further fuel to that fire. Yeah, but um, yeah, good play there from uh, Ruben as we listen into the referee's audio. I can't clearly see what happened. No, yes, he did. Uh, typical of what happened, Scott. We'll see what a try, but he got the strike. Both teams. You're going to see the play the ball up right around the back. Wait, 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 so the referee laying down the law there, telling the both teams there that he's not going to deal with any more indiscretions in the ruck. He wants to see a quicker play the ball from both sides. And I'll tell you what, the, probably the simplest way to do that, though, is penalise. It's being yeah. slowed down in the play the ball. Yeah, exactly right. Um, and we, as we've seen, we've seen far too many penalties. Both teams have been ill-disciplined. Um, and I think he'll have no option but to sit players down. Um, but, yeah, good play there from Rubenville. Played the whistle and uh, got the result scoring the try. Here is Daniel Payne, five metres in from the left-hand touch line, just short of the 20 metre line, around about 19 metres out. He's decided to take this ball back. He struck them pretty well today, but the wind has made it very difficult. This one should be swinging around nicely. Look at the reverse hook on that. It's a brilliant kick, actually. An inside-outside kick, skewered there, just around the left-hand side of the post. That's an incredible conversion there, Dunny. Yeah, it was a great conversion, and it was right in front of all the Thorby supporters, too, and they were giving him heaps as uh, he went in to kick that. 
Um, he's a big chook there thinking that was a bit of a cock up, but didn't actually turn out that way, did it, Dunny? No, it didn't. But um, yeah, great kick there by um, young Daniel Payne. And speaking of a kick, Thurmia get us back underway. It comes down to Picton, and that's Dunk who's pushing it Run forward it now. Down. Now they really have a bit of breathing room here, Picton. 22 minutes left on the John Stoneman Co. Lawyer scoreboard there, and the score is 20 points to four. Picton leading Thurmia, and the sun is really coming out sharply now. It's probably hitting up around those maximum temperatures, which I think are about 22, 23 today, Dunny. Yeah, well, if that wind goes away, it'll probably reach those temperatures, but I think with this wind, it's probably about 10 or 12 degrees. Yeah, it's certainly a lot of chill in the air there. That wind chill factor has picked and work it away here. They're over the halfway line into Thurmere's territory. They've still got another tackle up their sleeves here. Comes away to Payne. Payne decides, in fact, that's Foster who has that really, really sharp footwork there, and he decided he would take it on himself and engage the defensive line. Last tackle now. Payne puts a big kick up here, and that will swirl around very difficult in the air. He tried to trap it with the boot, Hannigan Brown, and it ended up going completely past him. Fortunately, his wing partner, Earnshaw, was there, and Earnshaw was able to pick it up, and they're still wrestling here. The referee has already warned both sides not to be mucking around and play the ball, and that's good to see, Dunny. Straight away, first example, and he's penalised it. Yeah, I think he probably is, uh, needs to use the sim bin as well. If they don't want to um, uh, listen to his instructions and be ill-disciplined, then um, he'll have no choice but to sim bin somebody. Well, the easiest way to rule, of course, is with the whistle and with the disciplinary actions that you can impose on players, whether it's sending them to the bin or just getting them straight off the field, of course. You're not going to be sent from the field for holding players down, but you might get a sim bin itself. Here's Kilmeister working away for Thurmia now. Jeez, he's bumped off a big run there. That's young Mitch Miles. Good hit up there from Miles, the, the prop recipient. for the Roosters. He is the recipient of the biggest hit of the year. Oh, he goes nine. He's broken through three tackles and into the backfield. Puts the foot down. Foster comes across, though. That's a good tackle from him. He had a cork earlier, but he certainly run that out to track down nine. Here's Kilmeister. Had to release it. That's brilliant play from Foster. Jumping out of the marker there to take two tackles in a row when they were in dire straits to pick the Magpies. They're working to the right-hand side now, though. Thelmere. Hannigan Brown went to ground. They're going to say that he was already tackled and then tried to release it. So they say, go back and play the ball. I'm not sure there was a hand on him, though. I thought that would have been fine to play on. Yeah, I thought that was play on. And he'll play the ball now anyway. Kilmeister decides to go short side. Oh, he had to do was catch it there, the number two. Earnshaw would have strolled over on touch if he got the ball and picked and certainly let him know about it. Coming out to him and giving him a mouthful there, Dunny. Yeah, lucky the TRG are on their way because that's the second one they bombed. Not too good at all. Dunny is going to work that one in. And on every given opportunity, I think you'll find here. Sit down, Dunny. Sit down. <laughs> Picked and work it away from their own line. And here they come. But, geez, all Earnshaw had to do there was catch the ball, stroll over untouched. Yeah, more trouble for the Roosters as uh, we see Whitehouse and Porter about to come back on for the Magpies. And they really have laid a great platform for Picton so far. The time is beginning to play on Thermia Roosters here. Not too long to go. 20 minutes left in this one, so 15 minutes have been played in this second half here. Thanks to John Stoneham and Co. Lawyers, who are our scoreboard sponsor for today. And, of course, you're hearing that referee audio thanks to AWPM. And they'll put a kick in here. The Picton Magpies, geez, Hannigan Brown nearly ended up running into touch. Did a bit of fancy footwork there, Steve Smith style in the big bash league, and brought it back to 30 metres out from his own line and around about five metres in for the left-hand touch line. They'll work it away now with Muscat, who hasn't seen a great deal of football, hasn't really worked it away out of his own end either. They've, both sides, you'd have to say, have relied primarily on their props to do such work. Speaking of which, here's Miles, who works it just short of the 40 metre line here for Thermal Roosters. Yeah, it's been a forwards game. Absolutely. Here is Kilmeister who decides to go down the left-hand channel. That's a freshman on the field. And speaking of haircuts, Dunny, what about that one? That certainly needs a bit of a shear. Yeah, there's um, there's a few. He's had that all year, and um, it hasn't really helped him. So he needs to get a get it out of his eyes and um, get it shorn off. So it's a bit of David and Goliath stuff there. We need a reverse one. Here they'll work it away now with a number six that comes away to Andrews. And Andrews links up with his centre partner there, Bromfield, on this right-hand side for Thurmy. He tried to offload the ball. That was a loose carry. He certainly can't rule that a strip, and the referee doesn't. Whitehouse picks it up in that headgear. And he's got two of them trying to bring him to ground, but he is an absolute handful, as we saw from that big, big hit-up that he went 50 metres in the first half. He's, um, he's played pretty well today, uh, Lachlan Whitehouse. Um, as we see a penalty oh, and there you go. That's him. against the man with the ball. The referee did say that he wasn't going to tolerate any more slow play the balls. And on that occasion, it was the man with the ball himself that was actually slowing it down, trying to creep up and get a few little extra centimetres there. And in the end, he's pinged his own side. Yeah, there's a fair bit of talk uh, between two teams here as well, um, which the referee and I do uh, stay on top of. 
of course, they are both local rivals, separated by only a few kilometres here, so things could get fiery. Here's the number two, Earnshaw, tapping and running it up himself, and there's a couple of players trying to get him to ground, including Porter and Whitehouse. Those are not two of the blokes that you want to run into whatsoever. And they'll work it away now. Kilmeister back to the middle of the field here. That's the number 15, Ladero. Ladero directly centre of the field now. 15 metres out, so in the end he hasn't actually picked up any metres whatsoever. Kilmeister comes away to Goggins. Goggins links up with Narn there on that sleek head. Well, I was going to say headgear, but he's got a sleek hairstyle, Mr. T style, in fact. And it comes away to Londero again. He links up with Andrews. Andrews has got no one to pass it to because they're all offside at the moment. They're all in front of him. No options there. So he simply takes the tackle. That's tackle four. Kilmeister looking for support. Goes to Goggins again. They really haven't thrown much whatsoever at the Magpies in this set. And there's only one more play to come here. What can they do on the last? Kilmeister works at the left-hand side. Rockwell puts in a pretty good kick here, but it will keep running. I don't think he's got that ball down. They're going to say it's gone too dead. Sorry, too far there and gone dead. Dunny, they had to throw far more at the Picton Magpies on that occasion there, the Roosters. Yeah, they would have been better off uh, just throwing that ball out wide and uh, running it. And they're not doing enough of it. They're just trying to go through the forwards. And the Picton uh, side, they're awake to that. And um, you don't try and play Picton up the forwards. <laughs> Um, Alex Peters, very smart coach, um, he would have told um, his team um, to make sure that uh, they keep him in the middle of the paddock. That's exactly what Picton have done here. They've really laid the platform for players like Porter and, of course, uh, Whitehouse as well, along with Johnston, who have done a great job up in that middle third there. And again, there's a big, big man, Porter, carrying defenders with him. Every time he's had it, he's been a handful. Nan probably lucky not to get a penalty there. He had hands all over the face of Porter. They work it away. Payne gives a good short ball. Nearly through was Johnston. Instead, he drops it. And that'll let Thilmere off the hook here. But as time really is starting to work against them for the John Stoneham and co lawyers. Queen Street, Campbelltown, 15 minutes, obligation free scoreboard. 15 minutes just over. Over, left on the clock here. The Picton Magpies, 20, Thermal Roosters, 4. Yeah, we'll just uh, three replacements there on the sideline for um, Thermal are about to come on in. Miles, uh, Richie Means and um, Brody Scott. Um, that'll give them to go forward with Miles and uh, Richie Means back on the field. And of course, Scott seeing his first action for the day as well. That jersey looks pretty clean, but he'll get, probably you'd like to think the last 15 minutes here to play out and play it really hard. Yeah, Goggins, um, Michael Goggins coming off for a well-earned rest. Um, very good player, Michael Goggins. And on goes that fresh man, Scott, onto the field. And here's another one coming off. It's Londero who will make way for that big, big man up front, Miles. And that's a nice little bit of running there as well from the Thermal Roosters. They'll work it into Picton's territory, around about 38 metres out, and they'll earn themselves a penalty as well. And as we have heard from the referee, he was not going to tolerate any more slowness in the ruck. But surprisingly, we're still, despite having seen about three penalties since then, no one's gone to the bin. Yeah, we're still 13 on 13. Um, I'm not sure what the penalty count is. It's probably about 20 all at the moment. But um, far too many penalties for a grand final, and no one's been seen it's been difficult to get a bit of a flow of this match itself with all the stoppages from penalties as that freshman on the field, Scott, decides to work it away here, 20 metres short of the Picton line, and they'll keep going up through the middle here. Richie Manns with a strong run there. Kilmeister waits, suss out his options, decides he'll go down the right-hand channel here to Scott, who gets his second hit up of this set, fresh onto the field, and so he's got those fresh legs to try and work and get through as much work as he possibly can. Very slow play of the ball. Kilmeister can't go to the left because all of his supporting players were in front of him, and they'll work it away now through the centre. He fended off two. He'll end up over the goal line, but they'll push him back into the field of play. Last tackle once again. Filmy haven't really thrown a great deal at them. Instead, what they will throw is a hospital pass, and it's dropped by Narn. Picton will come up with it. And in fact, are they going to say that it's been knocked back from Thilmere and then a knock-on from Picton, Dunny? Yeah, no, it should be, um, the ruling should be a knock-on from uh, Picton. So it should have a Thilmere uh, scrum feed, as we see Whitehouse down. Um, I was just uh, watching the um, Thilmere bench and um, Alan Shipley came off with a problem with his um, left knee. He's being heavily strapped there as well. He's got the bandage plus the tape getting put on himself on the bench here. His yeah, White House he, is still down in the background as well. Yeah, I think he must have a knee guard on and they're taping that knee guard back on. But um, I think he might be done and dusted for the day, um, young Shipley. I think the only way you'll probably see him come back onto the field is if the score gets a bit closer than it currently is. Just over 13 minutes left on the John Stoneman Co. Lawyers scoreboard here and the score is the Magpies, Picton for that matter, leading 20 to Thermal Roosters 4. But Thermal do have another chance here. 
try and get themselves back into this game. A converted try would see them 10 adrift. It's the work it through Rockwell after winning the scrum. Hannigan Brown links up with the centre. Oh, that's brilliant stuff. It's Simpson who's gone through for a second time. It was a quick p interchange of passing. In fact, they're going to say he's held up. That's wonderful defence. Let's have a listen to the ref because there's a bit of drama going on here too. The referee just saying, give them the ball. But geez, what an incredible tackle. I thought for all money, Dunny, that he was over and he got that one down. Yeah, I thought um, Simpson had his second try there. He, he ran straight for a big hole, but um, great defence from um, the Magports. And they just managed to get there at the very last moment and hold him up. Simpson could have had his second on the board and could have got them back into this game as Nan goes back through the middle here. But geez, he's met in a strong wall of defenders. Four picked in Magpies, pick him off and put him to ground. Now here's Kilmeister looking for his options. He finds it out the back here to Andrews. Andrews goes to the right hand side. Hannigan Brown tries to get around them. He didn't need to die for the corner because he just kept going. Held them off at literally an arm's length with the fend. And all of a sudden, there might be a little glimmer of hope here for the Thirlmill Roosters. The score, thanks to John Tonham and co lawyers, 20 is the score for Picton Magpies. The Roosters have just gone in. It'll be eight with a kick to come. Mark Dunny done. Thanks to MacArthur Installation. Speak to Dennis Hillier for all your renovation needs. Yeah, not sure um, why they're not passing the ball to Bryce and Inshaw. He may as well get a tracksuit, uh, the winger for um, Thirlmy. That's a couple of times he's been standing out here on the wing unmarked. Um, and they're not giving him the ball, but uh, credit where credit's due. Lachlan Hannigan uh, quick enough to get around the uh, picked and uh, defence and score in the corner. Hannigan Brown certainly put the foot down, found a bit of space in the corner, and now Simpson will have this conversion attempt, a very difficult one, just a metre inside of the right-hand touch side, around about 22 metres back as well. It's yeah, an important that, kick realistically though, Dunny. Yeah, that wind not as strong as, um, as what it was. Um, yeah, well, if he kicks this, they're less than um, two converted tries um, still in this game. So um, he'll need to kick this. Here he goes. It's a big run-up that he gets, really putting some power behind it. It's a beautiful curve back around. Geez, that's a fantastic kick. Curving nicely right to left, just to the left-hand side of the black dot in the end. And all of a sudden, we've got a bit of a ball game on our hands here. Thanks to John Stoneham and co. lawyers on that scoreboard. It's now the Picton Magpies 20, Thermal Roosters 10 points. And we have just over 11 minutes remaining in this one, Dunny. How do you see the final 11 playing out? Yeah, well, uh, Picton there in front, and they'll just need to control the ball when they've got it. Um, they look like they've uh, shut, up, shut up shop a little bit, um, which is very uh, un-AJ Peters-like. So... Um, Picton just need to play footy. You know, it certainly is hard to defend a lead, but you can play out one. That's the biggest thing here. They've just got to keep playing football, keep getting through their sets, and not just try and do the one-out hit-ups, though. They've actually got to try and win this match, not just hold on for the win. As we see, a uh, good, good uh, hit-up there from uh, Richie Mans. Richie Mans fresh back on the field and certainly pumping the legs hard there to get away. Now he's joined by his wing partner there with Muscat, who comes in for a hit-up. Hasn't seen a great deal of ball, so it's good to see him getting involved. Now work it away now, back through the middle, and he's bumped off a few of them here. That's a big run. Yeah, Mitchell Miles there. Um, good good uh, 12 metre run. Kilmeister out of dummy half. Gives it away to Richie Manns, and he looked for an offload. Couldn't find it though, but they are still getting a good roll on in this set. Kilmeister decides to go for a run out of dummy half. Took him quite a while to actually find any defenders that wanted to tackle him. It's 42 metres out, and once again, surely this has got to be 10 in the bin because it's another penalty for the exact same indiscretion, but we'll stick with the action here because Kilmeister tapped it. Found a bit of space on the left-hand side, linked up with Simpson, who was denied his second just moments ago. He's caught 32 metres away from the opposition line. Scott with a great run. Picks up 15 and all of a sudden they're into the Picton danger area now. This could get very interesting if Thurmill can get across the line once again. Here's Nan who has yet to have a break today. That's good footwork up through the middle channel. Tackle number three here. Kilmeister. He's got options both left and right. Which way does he go? Feigns to go right. Brings it left. Finds Richie Mance. Scott back through the middle there. Just short of the try line. Around about 10 metres to the left hand side. The uprights three metres short of the goal line itself. Kilmeister out the back. O'Neill Steps off the left, then he goes to another defender, slams the ball down, and Thirlmere are right back in this one. 20 points to 14 with a kick to come, just over nine to go, and we have a thriller in the making. Mark Dunny done, thanks to MacArthur Installation. Yeah, good uh, good try there, boy. Um, young Brody, is it Brody Scott? No, Christopher O'Neill. They've changed jerseys. Um, yeah, game on. Uh, nine minutes to go. Uh, another big conversion coming up here for uh, Simpson. If he kicks this, they'll be um, uh, down by four. Um, 
Picton will be um, hoping that um, he can miss this one and uh, they just need to get the ball back. Goal kicking has been very difficult for this match with the strong, strong wind that's been blowing. But however, we are seeing a bit of an improvement recently in the last couple of goal kick attempts. Payne slotted his one from the sideline. Simpson then followed likewise for the Roosters, and he's got another one here on the left-hand side of the field around about 15 metres in from touch. Lines it up now. He hits it low and hard like a soccer player, and that's gone right over the black dot. 20 points to 16 on the John Stoneham and Co. Lawyers scoreboard. Queen Street, Campbelltown, 15 minutes obligation free. Just over eight minutes to play, and all to play for in this one. Picked in Magpies. Jeez, and they're taking a long time to get back and set here. They look a little bit shot here, Dunny. Yeah, they're um, a little bit shocked. I can see um, AJ Peters on the sideline barking instructions to his um, to his team. Both coaches are up on their feet now. They exactly that. They certainly are barking the instructions. And it's another slow play the ball once again. And we're surprised that we yet to see someone actually put in the bin after what was quite a stern warning from the referee. There's another one, in fact. Kilmeister will now work it away to the number two. Earnshaw. He's barely touched it. As Dunny suggested, he should put on a tracksuit because he was catching a cold out there after, unfortunately, he spilled the ball with the line open. How do, how important might that drop ball end up turning out to be here for the Thelmill Roosters? Hannigan Brown got away from one defender, just five metres short of the half halfway line now and the Picton players are really testing the referee's patience they're nearly encroaching into the offside territory that'll be the last 42 metres out Kilmeister decides to go short side he's got players there puts a chip in over the top he's turned them around it's going to be a nice kick in the end because they'll get him just short of the goal line there so Picton they're going to have to work it out of their own end here that's a pretty good end of the set there Dunny yeah um, good coverage by um, young Daniel Payne to be there in that corner to uh cover that kick up but um, look for um, Thilmy to keep rushing up on the Picton Magpies and look for the Magpies experienced players in Porter uh, to run the ball out. And there is that man Porter taking that hit up. They need another good one here though and geez that's a strong um, hit up there in fact and I'm just trying to see the number there but he's underneath it. It was a good run himself there from Nicholas Ricketts who's been good today. Here's Johnston stepping off the left foot and coming back into the middle of the defenders. That's a great run, a very important one because he's picked up 20 metres and all of a sudden this might not be too bad of a set for the Picton Magpies. Payne will kick it from the 40 and he finds grass here but it's going to keep kicking on. That wind is strong. Will it hold up it's very important that it does it does indeed and the chase is fantastic Payne slips over though Muscat's done brilliantly because he got out of the in goal and it was so important that he did so because if he was trapped there you just about say picked in have run away with it Dunny here yeah. comes Hannigan Brown in fact he works away from we'll come back to Dunny one second finally he's caught 25 meters out from his own line yeah they're probably lucky there um the, all the Thelmy players were still getting on side, but um, just a lapsing concentration from the pick of Magpies allowed um, Thelmy to run uh, 20 metres and put all the players back on side. A bit of a lapse there, and just before that, it was a slip from Payne, who had put in a brilliant kick, and it was a good chase from him too, but the slip just allowed Muscat to get out of his own in goal. They'll work it away. A bit of an offload now. Nan comes to the centre of the field, 42 metres out from his own line as Porter tackles him. And I think you'll find that's Payne around the legs as well. In fact, it was Johnston. Here's Kilmeister decides to run. A good tackle from Bell who threw him to ground as Kilmeister threw the ball away and they're going to say that is a knock on however it looked very very suspiciously over the horizontal there Bell put in a lot of aggression in that tackle Dunny how did you see that one hold out? Yeah I thought uh, that should have been a penalty to the, um, to the Roosters um, as we see uh, Ryan Johnson down receiving attention from the trainer. Uh, Levi Bromfield, he, um, as soon as that ball got uh, knocked on by Thormy, he put his hands on his head. So, But there's still plenty of time. There's five minutes and uh, one second to go. Uh, plenty of time for either team uh, in this match to score another try. Of course, very lucky there from Ruben Bell, perhaps not to be penalised. In the end, it has resulted in a knock-on against the Roosters though, although the referee's just having a bit of a chat to both players at the moment. He's suggesting that they should pack the scrum, so nothing untoward happening in that little instance there. The referee just saying, come on, let's get back into proceedings. Five minutes on the clock, thanks to John Stoneman and co-lawyers. Queen Street, Campbelltown, 15 minutes, obligation free. It's not 15 minutes left here though, it's only the five, so we're one third of that and it's all to play for. The score is the Picton Magpies 20, Thelmill Roosters 16. Picton have got the ball here and they win the scrum on the halfway line. Now work it away on that right-hand channel before there's a big step. 
back from their winger there, the number five, which is Keegan Thistleton, who comes back to the centre of the field. They work it away once again here. I think you'll find that's Porter, who's had an absolute whale of a game. 35 metres out from the Roosters line. Bell waits a dummy half. He finds a runner in McKenzie. McKenzie takes two of them to ground. The Jesus, was a good shot in the end over the top from Richie Manns. Here's Bell, away to Johnston. Johnston finds Payne. Payne comes to the right-hand side. Links up once again. He's nearly through. Great ball over the top from the 5 eighth. Oh, what a way that should be it for Picton. It was Till who got the ball down. Stephen Dengate, what a wonderful ball over the top. Michael Morgan from the last grand final that we saw. Eat your heart out. Absolute brilliant stuff there from the Picton Magpies. It was reminiscent of Michael Morgan in the 2015 Cowboys grand final win. That's wonderful stuff. Stephen Dengate over the top. And Till touching down for a very important try for the Picton Magpies. Yeah, he's a lot quicker than um, I thought he was, uh, Stephen Dengate. Um, created that overlap by um, getting on the outside of his man and uh, I can tell you that Picton Bench uh, they all jumped up I thought they were doing a Toyota ad uh, <laughs> when he scored that try so um, yeah good try to Jared Till for the Magpies uh, as they lead 24-16 for um, AWPM Civil well, Danny called it as if it was a Toyota ad and certainly, oh, what a feeling at the moment for the Picton Magpies. Three and a half minutes to play. This is a very important kick here to put them 10 in front. However, you would think even if he misses it, there shouldn't be enough time for the Roosters to score twice because they are presently down by eight points. Referee blows time off here with three minutes and 18 seconds left on the John Stoneham and Co. Lawyers scoreboard. Picton Magpies 24, Thermal Roosters 16. Kick to come here from Payne. It's wonderful play from Dengate linking up with Till there. You have to think, picked in just about home and hose, but you can never say never in rugby league, Dunny. No, that's it. We um, we saw an eight-point try last week in um, first grade, so anything is possible. But um, good uh, gamesmanship there from um, Picton, uh, leaving the ball in the corner in the in goal and uh, running 30-odd seconds off the clock. And it is quite interesting as well. Thurmill had all the running for about the last 10 minutes. We weren't able to put another one on the board. And it all comes back to that very, very interesting call from the referee not to penalise Ruben Bell, who looked like he put that player over the horizontal. It was Kilmeister that was upended. Kilmeister getting a big offload away, and then Phil Miller ended up dropping it as Payne lines it up and kicks it. So 26 points to 16. That eight-point try won't come into effect now. If we do actually see it happen, it won't matter because they will still fall short. They've got to score twice now. The Phil Miller Roosters, 26 yeah, well, points to 16. They need to get 16. the ball back from the, um, from the kickoff. Um, as we see, picked a magpie. has got five in the front line here, so they're expecting a short one. And it looks like they will go short here. It's not a bad one either. It goes about 15 metres. Bell gets up underneath it. And it's a good take from Bell, who's been a bit of a hero for the Picton Magpies today. Two tries plus a big tackle that forced the turnover to lead to that last try, which could be the crucial one. Now work it away now. That's Ricketts. Simply trying to just wind down the clock here. They're doing one-out runs, dummy half runs, all the like. It's not going to be a great deal of passing, you would think, in the final three minutes here. That's Harrison Scott, who doesn't go anywhere. They're still on the 40-meter line, which is where they've been for three plays. Now they get some forward movement through Porter once again. Is that an absolute brilliant match? Bell waits a dummy half on tackle four here. Just short of the halfway line. Players all over the place to use there as an option. Payne decides to kick early. Probably not a bad play whatsoever. He's going to put it down the corner. Geez, that's a beautiful kick. And it'll also waste a bit more time here as it goes into touch. That's smart game management there, Dunny. Yeah, pinpoint accuracy uh, from um, number two, Payne. Um, yeah, great kick. Good taste too by the um, pick the mag pause. And you can see Thelma here, they're not really rushing to get to the scrum and get it set here. I think they've pretty much consigned themselves to defeat. There's only just over two minutes left on the scoreboard here, but if they do score off this scrum, literally anything could happen. We've seen it before, both with the Roosters and South a couple of years ago. Yeah, we've got uh, Earnshaw out here uh, all by himself. You might be suggesting that there's a kick coming across here soon. We could have seen that happen in the previous grand final today. Of course, Bundanoon running out 36 points to six winners over Oran Park for the Southern Highland Shield. Yeah, congratulations to, um, that's the first ever uh, premiership winning team for uh, Bundanoon in Oh, and here we go, Thelmere. That'll just about say good night, Irene. It's an unfortunate drop there from Miles. 15 metres out from his own line. He was looking for a hit up to get them on the right foot here. But unfortunately, it has ended in heartbreak here for the Roosters. They've dropped the ball 15 minutes out. Picton with 10-point lead and just over a minute to go. You'd have to say, Dunny, that's run and one. Yeah, that's uh, all over now. Um, as we see, Mitchell Sharp 
uh, down on the sideline there, ready to come on for uh, Philby. It's his uh, first bit of game time. He's only going to get a minute on the field as well, so not yeah. great for himself. But picked him, working away here on the right-hand side. They're going to save every bit of this in the last minute. The boys on the bench have already started clapping their hands. They're trying to work their supporters into it. Now working away here through Porter, who's probably for mine be the best player on the field alongside Daniel Payne today for the Picton Magpies. And it will be a victorious Picton Magpies side here. 40 seconds left on the clock. Bell over the top to Payne. Payne sees some defence rush up at him, so he steps off the left foot, tries to lead back up. Jeez, that could have been a high tackle. He was smothered by the defence there of Richie Manns, and he shoves him back to ground. But Payne can have the last laugh here because he knows his side has won. Clark works it away on the right-hand side. They're nearly through again here, the Magpies. Wouldn't they love to get another try on the board here to finish? The call for the kick comes early across for a crossfield kick, but they won't do so. They'll take it for yet another hit up here through Clark. He gets the ball away. Here he comes. White House, he might have got it down. The referee points to the spot. Ten seconds to go, and what a way to finish for the Picton Magpies. They will pick up the under-18s premiership here on grand final day for Group 6 Rugby League. MacArthur Sports Radio at Campbelltown Sports Stadium. He points to the spot, the referee. 30 points to 16 with the kick to come. The winners of the under-18s competition, the Picton Magpies defeating the Thermal Roosters, Dunny. Yeah, um, yeah well-deserved try there from, um, from White House. Um, he's earned that try, he's played pretty well today, but um, my hard earned would have to go to uh, young Daniel Payne. Um, he, he's been the best player on the field by a long way, but uh, we'll see what uh, the rugby league judges um, say uh, at presentation to see who gets the man of the match. But uh, I would have to say Daniel Payne. Well, there's been some brilliant game management from Daniel Payne, as you point out, Danny. He's had a really, really solid match there, the halfback. Also, big performances from Porter. Whitehouse, as you mentioned. Bell also getting two tries as Payne kicks it. That'll be the final scoreline there as the bench sprints onto the field, looking to congratulate their fellow players. The score, 32 points to 16 here for the Picton Magpies and the Thermal Roosters. My name is James Preston. A big thank you to... Presentations. I'd like to introduce Angelo O'Toole, the Reg Regional Operations Manager for Group 7 Country Rugby League, and uh, Angela will be presenting the medal. So, I'd like to invite the officials up first of all for the presentation. The referee for today was Brennan Cavallaro, touch judges Pete Till and Mick Ginelli. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the officials. Great job for them today as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the captain for Thorne, Roosters, Richie Kilmeister. Richie, if you could come up and say a few words. Thank you very much, Richie. Tough game out there, boys, and uh, certainly 
there's always next year as well. Well, folks, uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the player deemed the best on the ground for today, Pickham Magpies captain, James Fuller. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd uh, just ask James to come over for the Premiership Cup. Where you go, big boy? Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the Adelaide Eagles Premiers of 2017, the Pink and Magpies. 